everyone it's uh, i would like to invite uh, today's faculties for the session i would like uh, to request anjali choksi ma'am to escort the faculties uh, shilpi thapar ma'am and neha momaya ma'am on the stage i would also like uh, to request uh, preeti ma'am to be on stage with us so we have panel discussion today it's my privilege to introduce the panelist for the very apt topic opportunities as an independent director for which many of us are very keen to gain the insight we have two panelists today the first one is cs ip dr shilpi thapar ma'am with us she is practicing cs arbitrator and med uh, mediator insolvency professional corporate governance consultant with almost 18 years of experience she was chairperson of amdavad chapter of icsi in 2008 she is awarded a lifetime certificate as certified director from world council of corporate governance london she has been also awarded highest honor doctor of excellence honoris causa by confederation of international accreditation commission global in cooperation with keiss international university south korea she received women appreciation and achiever 2013 trophy from worthy and hope shrimati shri uh, smriti irani she has contributed articles for many professional magazines and presented papers in national and international conferences she is a professional speaker board expert and invited to speak by many professional institutions glad to have you ma'am the second panelist for the today is cs divya momaya ma'am she is expert in the field of corporate and secretarial laws corporate governance business development and startup with more than 19 years of experience she is founder of mentor my board an initiative to train and groom promoter directors independent directors women directors startup directors and aspiring directors she is on a mission to help indian corporate directors and build a community of 1 lakh directors by 2027 glad to have you too ma'am with this brief introduction i would like a request anjali ma'am to take the for, uh, session further yeah i would request preeti saula ma'am and anjali ma'am to felicitate uh, felicitate today's uh, panelists Please have a big round of applause. I would now request Preeti Ma'am to felicitate second panelist for the day, C. S. Divya Momaya Ma'am. thank you hiral after the amazing inaugural first session on opportunity as a social auditor now we are going to talk about opportunity as a woman independent director before we start i would like to know how many are there who are already as a woman working as an in, a woman independent director oh okay so then the topic is very apt aaj jitne bhi questions hai इंडिपेंडेंट डायरेक्टर वुमन इंडिपेंडेंट डायरेक्टर बनने के लिए आप सब पूछ लेना वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिसाइडेड द फ्लो सो विल गो विद दैट फ्लो 
पोस्ट दैट आपके जो भी क्वेश्चन है यू कैन आस्क टू दी थ्री पैनलिस्ट सो आई वंस अगेन वेलकम द थ्री एस टीम पैनलिस्ट दे आर ऑल देयर ऑन द बोर्ड लिस्टेड एज वेल एज अनलिस्टेड कंपनीज एंड दे हैव अ वेरी रिच एक्सपीरियंस सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विथ अवर बेसिक क्वेश्चन आई वुड बी आस्किंग टू ईच पैनलिस्ट इंडिविजुअली एंड सम ऑफ द क्वेश्चन विल हैव देयर व्यूज ऑफ फ्रॉम ऑल थ्री ऑफ देम सो लेट्स बिगिन विद द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट शिल्पी मैम टू आंसर Uh, since uh, she is a company secretary and a doctorate and pure din bahut laws ka madam padhti hai to madam hume aap bataiye uh, as as far as the law is concerned which are the sections applicable and how we can become an independent director kya section ki requirement kya hai kya exam hame deni hai nahi deni hai how we can become an independent director and also she can answer what is the age limit because we have many young chartered accountants here can they become an independent director thank you anjali and very young crowd indeed thank you so much for inviting me uh, so this is a very apt topic actually uh, independent director now uh, as i uh, anjali has already we have seen that you know very few of them are on the boards as a women independent director so this is uh, what i think uh, from my experience this is one of the very important uh, area uh, you know as a career option you can be a it's a it's a kind of a governor's journey it is not you know as a, as a professional uh, if you if you feel that you know okay, i'm a, i'm a chartered accountant i'm a company secretary so i can also you know become an independent director it is not like that is all together a different governor's journey like you chart your professional journey you have to chart your governor's journey you are a governor's professional when when you you know off for a board seat um so uh, as far as the legal and statutory requirements are concerned firstly as per as companies act section 149 and the director companies uh, directors appointment and qualification rules are applicable to it so you have to refer to that and uh, there is no uh, there is as such uh, under companies act you can be a director when you are of 18 years age old and there is no maximum limit for appointment of a, a independent director at any age you can be an independent director the minimum should be 18 but as per sebi guidelines lodr it is 21 and 70 so if you are a minimum of 21 years or 70 years age you can be a director in the listed companies secondly how you can be a independent director now this question as far as the legal uh, statutory requirements are concerned okay if you have expertise if you have a independent judgment if you have a integrity in the opinion of the board you know uh, you can be independent director but i'll share your very practical experience it's not like that first of all you have to do your swot analysis whether you want a board seat you are ready for a board seat you have make up your mind what is required to be done before you approach anybody for a board seat okay if you are uh, if you are a person who is calling the shots so it is not for you you know you you will be bored when you have to see the oversightness and all that so if you are uh, conflict averse you will be very reluctant of asking you know the uh, harsh questions on the board you know if you don't like to read much if you are not a reader then strictly no don't go for any board seat because reading independent judgment your decision making skills everything is required uh, you know for excelling in this governance journey so it is a you can call it is a sum sum of your uh, business qualities of your personal life experiences and your professional qualities so when these three things club then only you are ready for any board seat as far as statutory requirements are concerned uh, we all know that first of all whenever you want to become a director in any company maybe independent director you need a din number you have to apply for your din number secondly then you have to get your registration with the institute of Corp uh, uh, corporate affairs icci uh, and you have to appear for, for after the registration within yeah uh, yeah and after uh, within a year you have to appear for a online proficiency test and there are also exemptions are there uh, which has uh, which is updated from time to time suppose if you are if you are a company secretary chartered accountant having 10 years of experience you are you know uh, exempted from giving the exams if you are a bureaucrat or if you are associated you know in any kmp positions with a company have any experience you are exempted from that so many so the, you have to refer to the rules and regulations which is given under the section 149 uh, code uh, schedule 4 of the companies act as well as the uh, companies appointment of and qualification of directors rules uh, then uh, what i uh, believe is that uh, there is a eight steps you know which we have to see when we decide that we want to take a board seat first of all considering the board seat considering that i want to be a director in the company right second is you have to get board ready third is you have to join the board 
Fourth is you have to uh, study the board governance models. Okay, fifth is uh, you have to do the board work. Sixth is you have to do the director's work. Seventh is you have to have the impact on the board. Eighth is you have to influence the decisions of the board. And ninth is a board leadership position, that is the chairman of the board. These are the stages through which you have to go to develop your governance journey. So right now we are here. We are deciding whether we want to award or not. So these are the steps. So if you are ready for that, if you are comfortable uh, you know, in your own skin, you have that uh, courage. The courage is very important. I think the most important skill is courage. If you have a courage to deal with people, to express, to, to make sure that your voice is heard on the board, you have independent judgment, you have a strategical thinking, you know, you can work in the team, you can balance your emotions, then this governance journey is for you. So board work is not for everybody. You have to do a spot analysis and follow the rules and regulations. Otherwise, the, in the act, it is nothing. You, know, you, you can be independent director if you, have, you need to fulfill the criteria. But this is from my personal experience I'm telling. Otherwise, you will get frustrated. You know, uh, and mostly women director, mostly the company just comply for statutorily for appointing the women director. So in the board of six, there is one woman. So you can imagine the situation of that one woman when I want to get my voice heard how much hard work I have to do. Otherwise, if you want a hands-on involvement, you have to work hard. Otherwise, if you are happy with taking a view of 20,000 20, square foot office of the organization and sit and have a snacks and chit chat and come back, then it's your choice. But that will not sustain long. You'll get frustrated after two years, believe me. And it is a huge responsibility. A huge statutory liability is attached to it. It is not a joke. So the, the steps which I have uh, told you, you have to follow that. So immense effort, immense time, it's a full-time job. So it's a different, a different career. It is not a part of your professional career. I told you it's a governance, you are, you are a governance professional. It's a governance journey. So company chalani, board chalana, wo ek alag baat hoti hai. And as a, as a advisor, as a company secretary or a chartered accountant giving advices to the company, you have a different role. Altogether, the role is different. Your responsibility, your duties, your liabilities, your, uh, you know, the skills required, everything is different. So, that's the thing. Yes. Thank you, Shilpi. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. Let us make it a little light. Uh, how many of uh, you want to be the independent director of the company? Can you please raise your hand? Yes. Yes. Right. When you wanted to become a chartered accountant, what all you have done? Work hard. Work smart. Right. Did some research, ki ko, kaun sa paper mein kya question poochte hai, last trend, in last uh, five years, ten exams, yes or no? So what efforts you have done to become independent director? Have you done any efforts? CA banne mein agar effort karne hai, to independent director banne mein effort karne padenge ki nahi, yes or no? So then, what efforts? You do some research. Who all are the independent directors? Where the vacancy is there? Which are the companies where it is required and women independent? What are the rules? Now, what are the rules of women independent director? Have you, uh, do you know that? When this rule has come, 2014, long back, 10 years back, it has come. And now a lot of companies, this is the right year and this is a time that a lot of board positions are changing. Of course, 10 years, I'm retiring from one company one large listed company because 10 years are completing. It's maximum uh, two terms of five years one can be independent director on board of any company, right? And this, the first, this rule has come in 2014 where all the companies have started appointing. And now it's 2023, so 10 years are getting over in this year. And now a lot of, and, uh, in fact, the 70 years, the rule of 70 years is also now coming up and this year lot of board positions are getting vacant so this is the right time if you are having aspiration if you work hard you have to do research you have to build network you have to connect so you can become the independent director and this is the right time I'm telling you 
and and people and the companies have started approaching women and the professionals chartered accountants on each board you will see at least one chartered accountant is there and those are retiring now the right time the opportunity for chartered accountants specifically women to be there on the board do research you know this one one and a half hour session is just a food for thought but you all have to work for that okay thanks i would li like to add uh, ma'am has correctly said that hard work there's no option for hard work obviously you have to do your research now two things i want to uh, mention here more see in how many companies uh, you know you can be an independent director i think there is a one portion yeah, related yeah. to it right so as a director you can be uh, a director in 20 companies you know that 10 public limited and 10 private limited companies the sebi has come with a circular that uh, a, a director can be a direct, uh, independent director in seven listed companies and if he is holding any full time uh, position in any company as a full time director managing director then three listed companies so uh, in 10 public limited companies, seven is listed and three is a other public limited company. For the central uh, state, uh, uh, you know, uh, public enterprises, the limit is that and uh, you cannot be, uh, you can be independent director in only three uh, companies and 10 private limited companies. So they have their additional requirement when, when it, uh, you go to the center government companies and all that. Secondly, uh, when you uh, aspire to become an independent director. Now, is, we are giving you food for thought, obviously, everybody, all the professionals, you are eligible for that, you are capable for that, and the company needs a people like us, a professionals like us, you know, to run the board. But then, what you have to do? First of all, what I told, do your SWOT analysis. Secondly, build your board, uh, you know, value proposition. It is called BVP. What value you are going to, what, 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 what are the unique, uh, you know, uh, the skills you are having, which you can, uh, which can add a value addition to the board. You have to build your board profile. Your board profile is not your professional profile. It is something different. The format is different. You have to add your board experiences, what leadership qualities you can demonstrate, how you can, a so little bit of case study, you know, how, if suppose a problem arises, how you can, uh, you know, navigate that problem, advise the board. Then what is your experience and what is your interest? Uh, all the leadership qualities. So uh, the board profile is something you have to work on. Then you can get a seat by doing your age-old networking, but then when you have to appear for an interview, many companies are taking interviews also for a board position, big companies. Then you have to you know, prepare yourself for that level of interviews. So all this preparation is required to be done. So definitely it's a different career option. You have to work hard, but it correlates and you know it's a very good uh, addition to your professional journey. So that's the thing. Yeah. Thank you, Shilpi and Preeti, ma'am. Uh, there is no age limit, section 149. So what we have understood is anybody can become a woman independent director. But the challenge is, number one, to get a board seat. Number two, do we have that skills? Of course, Shilpi and madam has uh, shared, the first thing is courage. Because of course, every seat will come with its own role and responsibilities. So courage, bahut, I can relate to it, because every company will not be good for each board dynamics will be different. We'll of course discuss in the coming discussion. So courage, first of all, risk. Like we take risk in the stock market, this is also a risk. It is not necessary that what is seen is the same. What is not seen is the same. Of course, we can discuss, we'll discuss it. So we'll now move to the third panelist. Uh, we have talked about various skills. So what are your viewpoints? What are the uh, qualities in an independent director? And what are the additional soft skills required along with the qualities as an independent director? Uh, first of all, it, it's immense pleasure uh, to you know, uh, be here with all of you. And uh, when Preeti ma'am asked, how many of you really want to be uh, the independent directors? So very few raise uh, their hands. Uh, I'm not sure what was the reason behind not raising the hands, uh, because we being chartered accountants or company secretaries are the people who are closest to the boardrooms. We've dealt with boardrooms in various capacities, whether it is the auditors, whether it is the, the CFOs in-house, or whether it is uh, you know, the consultants to the company, whether it is capital advisory, so on and so forth. And being closest, being read the law in so depth, and you know, the way Shilpi mentioned, uh, it's not easy to have that position. 
I'm sure it has a lot of legal liabilities, uh, you know, but uh, when the law has made it uh, as, as a law that, you know, independent directors should be there. So the why behind having that independent director's role is very, very important. And when you start anything with that why, uh, the journey becomes very, very uh, smooth and enjoyable. I'm sure there are liabilities. You have to be very, very careful what paper you're signing. And that, that goes with even when we are the auditors. I mean, when you all are the auditors for the company, when we are secretarial auditors, every paper we are signing, we are taking risk. Are we yes or no? Yes. Absolutely. So when you are taking risk, and this also, when you are taking a board position, it also is a risk. But let me also tell you some positive sides of it, that why you should be uh, you know, kind of independent directors, and then what are the skill sets uh, which According to me, because uh, I'll, I'll just briefly, you know, kind of speak about my journey. I mean, definitely law, we all know, we can read, we will come to know. But I think it's more of our experience sharing and that probably will give you some confidence. Uh, so being company secretary and uh, I'm from a very small town, uh, uh, which is, uh, you know, in Nasik district, not more than a population of 10 lakhs. And today I sit on the boards of, uh, you know, worth market cap more than 17,000 crore. So that's a journey I have seen of being a professional from a company secretary, from a mother, from, uh, you know, a consultant and then to a board member. So again, it, it's a journey uh, which doesn't happen in one day, one year. It, it takes and I'm sure, you know, we have so many young professionals here. So when you are looking at your journey, uh, I mean, and, and also as Shilpi said, create your value proposition, see why you are going, to, why you want to be there. And then when you select that, that will really, really add a lot of value. So uh, uh, the most important thing and most important part, I mean, we all, you know, lo know the law very well. It's, it's very easy for us to say, okay, tomorrow I, I decide and I clear the exam and I'm ready for the board position. But the most important part is right network. So you should be at a right time, right place with right people. Then only those opportunities will be coming to you. And, and that's where, you know, the importance of networking becomes very, very important. Now, when we talk of the networking, let me also briefly, you know, kind of tell you, there are two or three types of networking. One is the kind of uh, networking amongst the like-minded people or professionals, like chartered accountants, you will come to the conferences, you may go, you know, in your business meetings. But the most important part is the when you have a diverse network, when, you know, you have the network outside your, uh, you know, comfort zone, that's where the real opportunity starts coming in. So create your diverse network, join great networking platforms, and that will kind of give you a, an extra edge. Again, second thing, I mean, as uh, Preeti Ma'am in the inaugural session also mentioned, a uh, lot of women, you know, we, we don't take up those leadership roles. Uh, I mean, definitely we are leaders are at, at our home, when we are practicing, we are leaders at our offices. But when we are taking part into the social uh, kind of organizations, whether it is a business networking meets, whether it is some social NGOs, you know, that's the first entry for anyone to get into, uh, you know, those leadership roles. And I'll tell you about my journey. I mean, uh, in 2014-15, when I uh, kind of joined a, a networking platform, and I was told to kind of speak five minutes about myself, and I could not speak a sentence in public. And then from that, there to here, I see my journey. I mean, I see complete transformation. It was probably one thing that whatever opportunity comes to you, grab it. And the most important part after that comes in is when the opportunities are coming to you, when you're taking it up, take it with complete ownership. It's, it's, you know, we have too many things. I mean, we are good, great multitaskers. But when it comes, you know, kind of giving the justice to the role, every role will demand time. So are we able to, are we able to give the time to that particular role is also very, very important. So this also is a very important skill when, we are, when I'm talking about the soft skills. I'll not talk about the technical skills. Definitely we all, you know, being law, uh, the, ch uh, the chartered accountants, uh, we all have, uh, you know, those uh, technical skills to understand the nitty gritties of the law. When you, you will be sitting in the audit committees, you will be sitting in the nomination and remuneration committee, you will be sitting, you will be part of CSR committees. And even, you know, there will be various committees, risk management committee, and we all understand those technicalities. But the most important part is, how are we managing our life? How are, ma how are we managing and balancing our life? Are we able to take up those roles? What are really helping us to reach the level in our life, what we have to take? And that's where, I mean, usually when we see, uh, you know, for any uh, kind of uh, uh, 
uh, a person in, in when we are talking of the corporate career, anyone who is entering at a very junior or a middle level, that person will always aspire that, okay, I want to be a director. Okay, now today we are talking of executive, uh, I mean, independent director's role, but, but how many chartered accountants are coming up in the organization? There will be CFOs, there will be, you know, the, the people into the uh, organization, the corporate world. How many women are really looking up to the board position in executive director's role? So if you are able to show those leadership qualities, I'm sure, you know, uh, that will help you to move to, from one level to another. And when, when I'm again talking of time management skills, I'm talking of negotiation skills, I'm talking of also very, very importantly is how uh, you know, uh, you're able to put forward your point of view. So the communication skills is the art. I mean, it's communication is the art. So how you are you know, developing those skills and all these skills you will not be able to master in one day or one year. It, it takes you know, five years, 10 years. And therefore, when even if we say there is no age bar, uh, I'm sure after initial five years or 10 years or at least 15 years of journey of your corporate career, only you will start thinking of what next. And that's where the role of independent directors, you know, taking up those positions starts coming in. So if you ask me, I'll tell if you have 10 years of experience, then please think of this career option. And again, uh, very, very important is, uh, also, you know, uh, I mean, I recently met a person and she said, uh, I've been doing great. I have been, you know, having my own entrepreneurship journey of 20 years. And now I am looking at my second career. So this also is a very, very important part that you start looking at building up your second career. You can't keep filing returns throughout your life. You can't keep, you know, uh, kind of uh, taking the risk of auditing a lot of companies and, you know, uh, sitting in the office morning 9 to 5 and doing the same monotonous job for, you know, huge number of years. You will also need your career progression. What is your second career? That's something very, very important. And I think, you know, uh, taking out that strategic time out. I mean, I always, uh, you know, say, and as uh, uh, Preeti ma'am mentioned that time that she got up at 5 o'clock and she read that complete note. So I think, you know, that's a magical hour. So are we all able to take out that time uh, in the morning and see what our career progression looks like, even if we are practicing? We, we still have a career. I mean, we can't say that we are, you know, entrepreneurship is also a career. So what is that really you need in life? So, you know, kind of uh, uh, time management, I, I understand, is become very, very important when you really are thinking of taking a leadership role. So uh, these are some important skill sets which I feel, uh, you know, key uh, things. Again, uh, you know, when we talk of last point, I'll just add on. Uh, even, you know, when last year we hold, uh, I mean, I run a company called Mentor My Board, where we train, groom directors for board positions, starting, you know, from uh, helping them clear IIC exams and everything. When uh, last year we did Women Directors Conclave, Honorable Finance Minister had graced the occasion. And she mentioned one important thing, uh, is that uh, it's not, uh, you know, the, the kind of a role, but it's the hesitation in the minds of women what stops them from entering the boardrooms. And I think this is very, very important how open we are, how open we are able to take risk in life. How much to take risk, again, is, you know, a matter. Now, when we are sitting in the boardroom, you will have certain, you know, kind of matters where you are not comfortable with. And that's where speaking up, communicating is very, very important. Most important, I mean, when we talk of the law, and if you're not comfortable with anything, if you're putting your point forward, ensure that you're making your point written in the minutes of the meeting. So reading the minutes of the meeting after the, you know, the minutes are circulated is also a very, very important point. So, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, over to you for the next point. Thank you. Thank you, Divya, for exhaustive uh, discussion. We had gone through the eligibility, we had gone through the skills, we have gone through the qualities. And you mentioned that many people are not interested. So let me take the discussion. Uh, let's talk about the remuneration we get and then again we go through the integrities of exactly. So let's have, because I, I just chose this uh, career in, in two companies. I'm an independent director and believe me, Divya mentioned, all the two panelists mentioned, it can be a s exclusive career opportunity. So uh, Shilpi, I would request you and all the two other panelists, how, uh, how is the remuneration uh, for the companies and what are the ranges and then we can take the discussion ahead. It's a very interesting question. <laughs> I'm audible? Yeah. So there's a saying, you know, uh, you don't get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate, 
right? So you have to value yourself. What, that is what your board uh, value proposition is, what you're going to bring on the table. And that also required courage. Courage is required everywhere, ladies. So you, are, you have to run with the wolves. So uh, be prepared. I see, I, this is, I'm, I'm sharing very practical situations with you. It's a very extraordinary, high profile career option. No doubt in that. You will be on the next level, but you require hard work. You require proper uh, planning of your board journey. As any ki kisi ne bhi de diya, kahin se bhi kuch aa gaya, to aapne accept kar diya. You have to be prepared for that. Otherwise, wo reverse aayega pura. So, if you work hard, as ma'am said, as uh, Divya also said, you need to work hard. So, statutorily, the remuneration, if you uh, ask, you know, uh, you can, uh, you cannot get any stock options. It's just a sitting fees or your uh, reimbursement of your expenses and profit on commission. Now the thing is that what you negotiate with the board, sky's the limit. So highest paid, I think the highest paid independent director in India, he, he, what he's getting eight or nine crores per annum. This is what, uh, you know, as far as my knowledge. So we can aim higher than that also. But the thing is that how you are helping the board, how you are protecting the interest of the stakeholders of the company, what value, why the board, why the company should pay. Because everything is subjected to the shareholders' approval nowadays. So justification is required. So develop yourself uh, in such a way that whatever you uh, demand, people, they have to pay it to you. Yeah, Preeti ma'am. As per Companies Act, uh, maximum remuneration, uh, the, there are two types, two kinds of remuneration. Uh, one is board sitting fees, uh, meeting uh, sitting fees, and another is a commission from profit. So the sitting fees as per Companies Act is maximum up to one lakh per board meeting. And uh, um, again, for committee meetings also, it is maximum up to one lakh. And, um, uh, if we see the large listed companies and other companies are actually paying one lakh, and sometimes the auditor raises objection that committee meetings remuneration should not be same as the board meeting. So the committee meeting uh, fee, sitting fees are sometimes lesser uh, than the board meeting uh, sitting fees, and uh, some companies are also paying uh, maybe in the range of say. Um, 30,000 30, to 60,000. It again depends on the board, the culture of the board, and um, the nomination and remuneration committee actually approves the remuneration. And what we have seen, uh, my experience of last uh, 10, 12 years on the board, every year uh, NRC, that is nomination and remuneration committee, approves the remuneration which is increased by uh, of the, um, um, uh, executive directors, MDs and executive directors. Um, however, if the company is paying uh, lesser than one lakh, maybe say 30,000 or 50,000 uh, sitting fees, uh, those are not increased. And at that time, uh, what happens? If it is mandatory by the Companies Act uh, or SEBI to have one meeting of only independent directors. And during that time, uh, the independent directors have to actually discuss uh, see, uh, the remuneration of executive directors is increasing every year. The CFO uh, salaries, uh, KMPs, that is key managerial personal salaries are actually they raise every year. And accordingly, uh, if it is not at par and within the uh, highest limit of the Companies Act, then we uh, need to actually raise the voice uh, and all the IDs during that meeting can discuss about it and always say, uh, uh, convey to the management and generally management listens. Again, it depends on the management to management. As regards to the commission from the profits, it has to be a maximum, a limit is there, 2%, I think. 1%. 1%. 1%. 1%. Up to 1% uh, of the uh, uh, profit, distributable profits. And uh, that can be actually, uh, generally what I have seen, that has been shared to the independent directors equally uh, among all the independent directors. This is my 
uh, experience. Uh, sometimes it also happens, um, uh, the negotiation happens, and it happens on seniority-wise also. Uh, it, uh, it may also happen on the basis of contribution also. However, the companies act, you know, sometimes it happens uh, if there are lawyers or other professionals like engineers and all as an independent director on the boards, they are doing some other work. The fees are actually very minimum, say 30,000 or 40,000 for sitting fees uh, for um, per board meeting. And these other professionals are actually uh, uh, doing some other work and taking professional fees. But as per companies like Chartered Accountant, when they are on the as an independent director, cannot do any other work. Uh, because it uh, it actually uh, independence is violated and hence it is very important to uh, see that uh, our sitting fees are actually as per the requirement and as per our value what we give to the uh, company and the board and hence uh, otherwise what happens they are getting through some other uh, route you can always do the comparative analysis when uh, I'll share one example with you uh, on one of the board I was and uh, the sitting fees was like 50,000 uh, per uh, uh, board meeting. And we discussed in um, the uh, independent director's meeting ki it should be at least raised and it should be par. Um, and at that time uh, when uh, we uh, actually uh, conveyed to the management in the board meeting, ki, uh, uh, it has to be actually raised and 50,000 uh, per meeting is not sufficient. And uh, then we said that uh, uh, if, you, uh, if they can do the industry analysis of that sector as well as that level of company, if, and then decide the fees, the sitting fees. And then they actually did uh, for some six to eight companies. And then they realized all the companies are paying one lakh rupees. And then after realizing that, realizing that they have increased the fees. So there are various ways of communication also to realize the board, the managing director, executive directors, and uh, to uh, get it at a par with the industry standards. Thank you. In fact, I'll, I'll also add on uh, a very important point here. Uh, and you know, kind of some harsh ground realities. I mean, definitely when the companies are listed, uh, they will pay, uh, but not all listed companies are good paymasters as far as independent directors are concerned. Very few, uh, you know, maybe top 1,000 companies or 2,000 companies may pay a good kind of uh, sitting fees and commission and all. Uh, I'll give example. I mean, recently one person came and told me because we, you know, kind of also have a, 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 a you know, help companies to get independent directors. So he said that, Madam, independent director chahiye. I said, okay, what qualities you want, what skill sets you want? And he said, koi bhi chalega. So which kind of companies you're selecting is very, very important. And when I said, okay, what skill sets? And I digged out and I asked him. And he's, uh, then I asked, what is the sitting fees, uh, you know, you will be paying to that person? He said, 40,000 rupees. I said, okay, 40,000 rupees per meeting. He said, no, no, madam, saal ka 40,000. Kaam kya hota hai independent directors ko? Right? So this is the harsh reality. And I'll tell you, uh, I mean, uh, because I'm talking to chartered accountants, lot of times promoters come and tell us, madam, CNA bola hai, itna sitting fees dene ki zarurat nahi hai. I mean, this is something which is harsh reality. See, try to understand when a person is, I mean, the way, you know, uh, Shilpi mentioned about the legal, uh, you know, aspects. It is a legal position which has a very, very high risk involved. And if you don't have high returns on that, that risk taking is not at all advisable. So, and I'll tell you, one, indip one person came and he said, Madam, IICA certified whom hai? Ab mujhe board position chahiye. Koi bhi chalega, madam. 25,000 rupiah ka bhi sitting fees milega, mera first position important hai. But koi bhi chalega. I said, you know, for 25,000 rupees, what risk you are taking in life? Are you going to join any board? So my suggestion or my, you know, kind of recommendation to all of you will be, choose your board wisely. What is your motive? I mean, if you want to choose a, a board which has high status, I mean, very renowned company, but they may not be good paymasters, choose that because if you want to be there on that board, you will get attracted to a lot of other boards. Is your object to earn money? Then choose a board which may be paying you high sitting fees, but there may be some challenges. And, and mind you, when the directors are paying you hefty money as sitting fees, probably their intention is we are getting 
kind of people just to sign rubber stamps on a board. So be very, very careful when you are choosing the board. Or third one is you want to create the impact. You want to see if the company is really doing good and you want to create impact. You may compromise your money and you may take up the role because you are joining with them and aligning with the thought process. So most important part, whenever you are joining a board, I mean, uh, interviews do happen, board interviews, but you also interview the promoter. That's very, very important because knowing the mindset of the promoter, knowing the background of the promoter is very, very important. Do your due diligence well there. Thank you. I want to add two points here. So very nice. Yeah. Uh, this is my question. The next question, no, how add, to assess I, the organization? I, I want to add. Yeah. Uh, along with the sitting fees and whatever the remuneration we get, you should always demand your insurance from the company. DNA insurance. That is that is very important. You should never join the board without this insurance. Professional yes, yes. Uh, directors and uh, indemnification policies are there. Should, you should be safe. So for, you should first safeguard yourself against all these responsibilities and liabilities. And secondly, uh, Divya rightly mentioned, you should choose your board, whether you are the right fit. That fit word is very important. It's a very small word, but it is a very uh, having a very deeper meaning. So whether you are fit for a board, that is required to be done. And uh, thirdly, I have also seen you know, uh, the discrimination in paying the remuneration to the independent director. Suppose if one women independent director is there and four, uh, three men directors are there, they are normally in the many of the companies I've seen, they are paid more. So, uh, no, uh, in the sitting no uh, overall I'm telling, sitting fees is just a part of the remuneration. Overall I'm telling that what they get, you can just refer the reports also. So why this happens? So that is what you know, you're bringing on the board. What is the impact of the board? And your uh, courage to negotiate, to know your value, that is more important. Thank you. So my next question is, let's say we all are ready for the board seat. So how do we do that matching? Let's say an organization appears you that, Madam, will you be interested to be a woman independent director? As Divya also said that for 25,000, we are ready. So how do we assess the organization if we get any of the opportunities? How do we do that homework, Shilpi? See, there are four building blocks which uh, every aspiring director should consider. One is industry. You know, uh, what kind of industry you are joining, what, what industry, you, industry you are interested in, are you joining as a board? What is the organization? What is the history of the organization? What are the profile of the directors? What is the financials of the organization? What is the culture? What is the reputation? What is the technology uh, used by this organization? So all this research has to be done. Third is the board. Who are the promoters? As we were rightly told that you have to interview the promoters. Promoters ko to sabse pehle hi dekhna hai, uska reputation kya hai? History kya hai puriyo, uski promoters ki. You know, whether, what is, a, uh, uh, what is a culture going on in the company? So, uh, uh, what are the governance models which is adopted by the company? Uh, so, everything, you know, regarding the board you have to uh, scrutinize. And the fourth one is uh, board governance. How the company, how the board is run? What are the, whether there are policies, whether there are procedures in place? And, uh, you know, uh, 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 like what, how, how it is actually they are complying with the, uh, you know, the provisions of the applicable acts. So all this kind of processes you have to uh, see when you join the board. So when anybody approaches you for a board position, always demand for this, uh, you know, supporting documents for, of these four building blocks. I think that is very important. Uh, in fact, I'll just add on a point here. Uh, whenever you are doing your due diligence before joining a board, the most important part is go to the Bombay Stock Exchange or National Stock Exchange website. Look at the shareholding pattern. Who are the major stakeholders, investors in the company? Number two is also, you know, uh, look at the governance reporting done by the company. Are there frequent changes in the management at the CXO level? I mean, are the KMPs coming and resigning and going and, you know, what is the culture? That will show you the culture of the organization. Is the organization, uh, you know, so strong that there is a very stability at the top level? And most important uh, thing is, you know, uh, today we have a lot of information publicly available on Ministry of Corporate Affairs. Watch out investors on, you know, the BSC, NSC websites. And even, most important part is, even go to the, the websites like Glassdoor, uh, websites like, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the nokri.com and all, where employees are giving feedback about the company, the reviews, what you are seeing in the, the social media, the Google reviews of the company. What does the customer, as you know, uh, 
uh, uh, Preeti ma'am had mentioned stakeholders. They all are stakeholders. Listen to the stakeholders. That's very, very important. So quality of management also becomes very, very important when you're joining the board. That's it. Yeah, one thing I want to add on, uh, this is my personal experience. Whenever some company approaches me, you know, for a directorship, women directorship, so normally what happens, the CFO or CS approaches you that, ma'am, we are interested, our board is. So the first question is that, when can I come and meet your promoter? So it is very important to meet a promoter in his office. What will be uh, the, uh, uh, how you benefited? You will know the culture, how the office is set up, who are the employees, what is the level of the employees, how the promoter is sitting in the cabin, what is the body language, how he speaks. So that is very important to visit the company's registrar office. I think that is the first step you should take. Never talk on the phone and finalize. I want to, I can, I'm, I, I can only decide after I meet your promoters and your other directors and see your organization. That's it. You will, you will, 90% uh, of your issues will be solved there. Um, uh, that is very important, uh, as Shilpi has said, about meeting the promoters and interaction with them, one-on-one -on -one visits and visiting their office. But before that, uh, you have to do full KYC of them, due diligence, and also see their balance sheet because we, chart, as a chartered accountant, actually understand the balance sheet, review it, see the uh, what are their reserves and uh, um, uh, also the loan part whether they are uh, repayment is done in proper uh, way or, or they are not uh, overdues and all that annual report actually you have to read and understand the annual report, the balance sheet, the financials. PNL, so that is core of chartered accountants. Again, a lot of uh, record, uh, recordings, see both are uh, Divya and Shilpi are uh, company secretaries, they'll know. Now it is, import, uh, it is mandatory for the companies to upload the recordings of the meeting also. So uh, on the website, unlisted companies. So we can actually uh, see the audio, audio meetings are already there. We can actually download and uh, understand, hear those meeting, the proceedings of the meeting and understand how, who all are speaking and what are their behaviors. So that will actually, we'll understand a lot from all these things. So I'll share one practical example. Uh, I think six months back, one company approached me, you know, for becoming a women independent director. Now, uh, when the CS called me, I told that you, as ma'am told, I also told that you just send me three years, uh, five years financial statements. I would like to see, you know, what is your financial position and all that. So, uh, what happened, uh, the last four years, they were not having any turnover. You know, the company was going into huge losses and write-offs and all that were there. And uh, the company was proposing to come into IPO. And the last, the immediate last financial year, the turnover was shown at 500 CR. So I asked the uh, CS that, or the CFO that, what is it about? What special you have done? You know, what what your what is a, your business and all about? So they were not having any answer. Uh, Madam, वो हम बाद में बात करते हैं. आप एक बार हाँ तो बोलो. मतलब ऐसे कैसे हाँ बोलते हैं? आप मुझे बताओ ये कैसे किया है आपने? You know, what is that? Then uh, uh, you know, I inquired from the market also. They were having a good reputation actually. I was not able to understand ये क्या है मतलब you know what is going on. So I told that okay, I'll think and then. Then I asked that who is a merchant banker. So they told me the name of the merchant banker. I directly contact the founder of the merchant banker who was handling there. And then I got all the information from him that what is the story behind it. So you have to be very conscious. You know, uh, many sub friends se pucha, you know, I were very high profile people I contacted. Everybody was okay, friends with any both a chick company, you join it, you know, you will be it's very they are good pay masters and all that. So if you go to market reputation, se jao, to I would have been there and I don't know what was happening, what happened, it's a But then I applied a mind and I, you know, where I had to kill myself, I had to kill myself, full information I had and that people were also professional, they helped me out and then it was done. So you have to be very conscious. You have to do your KYC and everything properly. Smart, alert at all the time. Thank you. Uh, Divya, you would like to add? Okay. Uh, so let's say we have done the organization SWOT analysis and let's say they have offered us uh, X amount for sitting fees. So how do we decide that the sitting fees is matching uh, with the, uh, of course there are no uh, barometers and there are no parameters but yes some few uh, guidelines that the, 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 ra that the sitting fees offered to us is appropriate or not. How do we decide, Shilpi? 
you are asking all tough questions to me actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we go I with know, I, I, I'm, I'm just joking. <laughs> So, uh, statutorily, you know, uh, just, just a minute, just a half second, I'll take. Statutorily, uh, ma'am has narrated very nicely in, in a detail, and I think we professionals at the age, but then uh, I think uh, uh, the organization, what is the culture, how they, you have to refer their past history, what they are paying to the other directors, and how you can have an impact on the board, how much time you can give, energy they can you have to commit to them. Uske hisab se, you know, you have to, uh, negotiate with them, I think. It's all about the negotiation. I think Divya is in a better position to add this. <laughs> in fact, uh, uh, Preeti ma'am mentioned, uh, you know, uh, one point that uh, when, uh, about the sitting fees when they were discussing an industry kind of peer benchmarking was yeah. done and that's how the, the board agreed to pay more to those people. So you should, you know, kind of do your analysis of uh, uh, understanding what's last remuneration given to independent directors. A lot of times promoters give excuse, that no, no, what's their fault? We started in your range, but in five years, it's been increased in this range. Now, when we are appointing a new director, appoint kar rahe hai, we will start from that stage. Right? So, that time you have to mention, right? Because from there to here, there is always a, the, the time lapse already has happened. Inflation bhi ho gaya hai. So, and, and you all are in a better position to, you know, kind of uh, speak on that. Another point is uh, very, very important, you know, uh, when we are talking of the remuneration, how do you identify or how do you kind of, you know, uh, make sure that you are getting it right? The most important point here it comes is, uh, you know, there are a lot of reports also available in the market. So, do study those industry reports. I mean, there, there is a, a, a database called Prime Database. They, they kind of publish a lot of reports. So, you also, you know, need to have your research done well before, you know, you are sitting across the table or negotiating on the table. Another point is a lot of times, you know, uh, you don't get chance to negotiate. Now, at that situation, you have to decide whether money matters to you more or that position matters to you more. And that's where you will have to choose and prioritize, you know, your uh, preferences in life. So, if money matters to you, you may simply say, no, no, yeah, remuneration, I cannot do because of what time involvement is going to come. So, mo when you are interacting with the promoter, speak to that person that what is it that they are expecting. Are they expecting you only to be a rubber stamp or they are really wanting you to come and add value? And that honest conversation, believe me, I mean, that may possible that, you know, promoter will say, no, no, we don't want you. But one no can, you know, actually make a very clear kind of a, a, a path for you. And, uh, you know, if, you, if the promoter is demanding high time from you, I'm sure they will be ready to kind of pay you more. So, uh, the clear conversation with the promoters as far as the remuneration is concerned should be very clear. Lot of times it may happen for the freshers who are first timers. They may not be able to speak up. So, most important part here, dynamics. Use your senior independent directors, peers to put forward that this is something which is happening in the industry. At a junior level, you, it may be possible promoters aura is so big, you may not be able to speak up. That's the time use your, you know, uh, uh, senior independent directors who are there as peers with you to say that, you know, this is the industry rate and, you know, I think the remuneration has to be increased. And I'm sure, you know, when a senior uh, or, you know, a gray-haired person speaks, thoda sa vetage bad jata hai. So, uh, you have to kind of use these dynamics well when you are kind of negotiating. And that's where art of negotiation comes into picture. So, believe me, ladies, this skill is very, very important. Thank you. Great, Divya. Uh, now, last few questions will take its... Yeah, Preeti, when you want to add? See, I already uh, spoken about the fees earlier, uh, how to uh, negotiate, but the things are like, it is after what Divya has said, uh, once we are already becoming the independent director and then we discuss with other independent directors and, you know, for negotiation. However, at the beginning, you know, practically I am telling all of you, my practical experience being on the board of so many companies. See, uh, we have to actually study because we don't know what are the fees. So annual report is there. Please study the annual report and what are the fees actually being given. It is very difficult for uh, anyone who is joining to ask the fees. One can definitely ask, but it is always better to understand for in annual report what are the fees are being given to the director. It is mandatory requirement to disclose. So then first you decide, see it is not 
be uh, wi while appointment it uh, if it depends if it is a very old large listed company it may not be feasible because they are already paying some x number of fees uh, to others uh, and we are negotiating it may not be uh, in at the beginning possible to negotiate very hard i am uh, practically i am telling if it is a very new company first time they are appointing and they really want our service as a id then it may be possible that negotiation is possible it is, is can happen so depending on the company that negotiation can be done and depending on the again the goodwill of the company sometimes it's a very good company however remuneration is little less but uh, joining that board our reputation is also increasing so one has to actually see ki remuneration is important or uh, being on the board is also important of that company so it is a very very subjective thing and uh, one can actually have uh, their own preference uh, and accordingly can decide but it's always to do the proper due diligence of the company uh, before joining very rightly said and i think remuneration is also very important uh, you know along with the position because what happens if you know if you work with a lower remuneration you don't know when is going to increase and after 6 7 months you know get demotivated ki yaar kuch mil to raha nahi hai itna sara kaam karna padta hai and uh, believe me board work is you need to do lot of work karna hi padta hai it's a very time consuming thing because when there are board meetings when there are committee meetings you cannot go and dress up and sit like this आपको दो दो तीन तीन दिन पहले आपको पूरे बोर्ड एजेंडाज पढ़ने पड़ते हैं 500 पेजेस की यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड द थिंग्स देन ओनली यू विल कम अप विद द राइट क्वेश्चंस आपका आपका जो मेन रोल है दैट इज टू पुश द बोर्ड टू टेक अ इनफॉर्म डिसीजन यू नो इन द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ द कंपनी इन इंटरेस्ट स्टेक होल्डर्स हाउ यू आर गोइंग टू डू दैट इफ यू डोंट रीड एनी और एक ही चीज़ नहीं होती इट्स नॉट अबाउट द कंपनीज एक्ट बट इट इट इज़ अबाउट एवरी आपका इंडस्ट्री वो जो इंडस्ट्री में जिसमें कंपनी ऑपरेट कर रही है उसका क्या करंट पोजिशन क्या है what are the uh, you know the internal uh, what are the internal conflicts going on in the company everything should be in, on your tips so it's it's a, it's a overall preparation you have to do so remuneration is also very important so as both of them has told that we have to do our due diligence before joining a board be very alert but definitely it's a excellent opportunity i advise all the professionals we are capable please work on on this journey this is a separate governance journey you always answer my question before i ask <laughs> on the lighter side so apart from the roles and responsibilities which is there in the companies act hum log sab pad lenge i want uh, all of you to share your practical jaise aapne bataya do teen din pehle we have to read the agenda uh, uh, the minutes whatever the presentation is done under each committee actually hame kya karna hai can you share the practical i'll, I'll start with divya first thank you so uh, if i uh, speak about you know the first board experience that's usually uh, you know little different there is anxiety there is you know uh, nervousness uh, the first thing is uh, you know uh, don't be in a rush to kind of put forward your point on every point because you are in the first board meeting you know you still need your homework to be done well number 1 uh number 2 is you need to understand the dynamics uh, of the board the culture of the company so take your time do your research on that that's already we have discussed uh number 2 is uh, you know the time commitment as uh, shilpi also mentioned before the board meeting you will have to keep certain time slots open for reading that agenda paper along with that agenda paper because it's a price sensitive information create a separate email account for that don't share it with you know uh, i mean normally hamari aadat hoti hai hum hamara ek hi email id sabko dete hain hamari team bhi access hota hai so confidential information price sensitive information hoti hai create a separate account email account for that and only you have the access to that account because today uh, the way sebi regulations are drafted the uh, insider trading regulations every trail of information how it is flowing is mapped by the regulators whether it is a whatsapp message whether it is the email communication even when a, there is a co telephone conversations you whom you have spoken to you know lot of trails are created now and i think you know we are already talking of the audit trails also so we are moving in that area so please be very very careful when you know you are sharing any information about the company in the outside world another point i'll add on here is uh, independent directors are those stars you know in the galaxy so 
the company is looking at those stars and you know they want those stars there now when the stars come in they bring the outside in perspective so what you have to bring in you you may not be subject matter expert company may be a manufacturing company you are not expert in manufacturing but what you are bringing to the table is your core strength if you are able to add value in your subject matter expert uh, sub domain you will be a great value addition for the company so don't think lot of people say that oh i am not a chartered accountant i am not a company secretary can i be on boards yes anyone who has 10 15 years of any industry experience can be on boards and number 3 is uh, you know the way we have seen uh, today even the singhania um, Gautam Singhania and the way the matters are going on, I'm sure a lot of you might have read it. The role of independent directors. So you know, the, uh, uh, again, it comes to you know the due diligence. Is the family you know uh, it, it's a family business because lot of 95% of the businesses as per NSC statistics are family controlled businesses in India. So you will find lot of family dynamics. So when you are sitting in the boardroom, that dynamics will come into picture, and you will have to play a major, major role there. So be very, very careful when you are sitting in the board. So rest all points, I think Shilpi and uh, Preeti Ma'am can add. Thanks. So there are two things: when you don't have experience and you have joined the board, now you are a women director, and the rest are all the seasoned directors. They are the board for last five years, ten years. So the question comes: what I am supposed to do? I mean, what do I do? कैसे शुरू करूं? The first year is always called onboarding year. You don't have to do anything. You you don't you just have to absorb, absorb and absorb. You have to see the board dynamics. कि chairman क्या है, बाकी के जो directors हैं उनका nature क्या है. किस हिसाब से flow चलता है board meeting का. कैसे agenda आता है आपके पास. Information gap कितना है? Because there is a, this is a major problem in all the boards that the uh, information gap is too much. Means what the board knows and what the management knows. so how to get the information from the board aapka aapko apna reputation aapko apna kaise jo aapke jo fellow directors hai aapka kaisa repo baithta hai so your onboarding year set the tone for rest of your tenure that is very important you just have to absorb the things kaise chal raha hai kya chal raha hai kaise aapko information aa rahi hai kaise and the thing is that if you have a curiosity you should know how to put the questions in the right tone at the right time With a proper body language, don't be aggressive. Or if you feel that I am not satisfied, I am not getting any answers. Because see, uh, it is it is a normal practice, you know. Uh, practically, when you will be on the board, the first year is tough for a director because you have thousands of questions, hote hai, and people, the other directors, will not be able to answer. They do willingly, they don't want to disclose the things. It may happen like that also. The management is not too close to you, so that is your skills. You know how to get the information from them. so this is this is the second thing third second thing is that when you go for a board meeting what are you required to do so there is a prep framework first is prepare for the board meeting read the agenda thoroughly each and every line each and every paper that is very important make your own points what is what 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 points you know you feel is important for the discussion of the board third is frame the right questions the question framing is very important it's a very important skill your half of the problem will solve if you if you know how to ask the right right question in right language it should be respectful and in collaborative way so that is very important and prioritize now where the questions you have framed you should know how which which question you should ask first so that is that is the framework you know in which you have to prepare for the board meetings now sometimes i i'll just i'll just take a, a two minutes uh, there there were there are two uh, practical situations you know which i often face now the thing is that uh, you know when many many professional ask me are we independent director board pe to karna kya hai humko this is a this is a standard question but when you are choosing to be independent director you should be clear what you are out to do on the board ye standard question hota hai ki mujhe as a independent director kya dekhna hai kya karna hai so that is very very normal and you you actually this is a very important point so there are five things you know which i uh, you know uh, suggest that you know you should look when the board agenda comes or something like that any transaction any agenda item one is strategy your role is limited to the strategy and governance kuch bhi agar decision aata hai koi bhi agenda point ka decision aata hai whether uh, you know it it is meeting the strategy is meeting with the ultimate goal second is related party transactions conflict of interest this is very important koi bhi agenda transaction hai agar aapko lagta hai ki isme rpt compliances karna hai ya conflict of interest hai this is very important i will share one example with you 
I, this is not as an independent director. I was sitting in the board meeting of one listed company. Uh, so they were having some transactions of buying the land, you know, with the uh, 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 with a company in which one of the key directors, you know, was uh, was having any connection. Most of the directors were knowing this thing, but nobody was raising this point. Or would director be, you know, he was sitting, he was not disclosing that, okay, I'm interested in that. And there were two independent directors, you know, they were also knowing that this is and they were very reluctant that we will not approve it. If we don't approve it, then, you know, the dynamics will become bad and, you know, everything, the disputes will start and everything. So they, they just, or my opinion that, what are we doing in this, you know, this, uh, they, they asked my opinion. So what uh, I told them, that, uh, you know, uh, speaking uh, like this, you know, that because you are, you are just spectacle that he's having a conflict of interest, you are not sure about it. So either you can request to defer this item, or either you can request to form a working group of a board of directors, and they can discuss, and in that, in the closed meeting, you can discuss that, see, we have this apprehension that you are interested, and then, you know, you can bring on to the next board meeting, or you can pass to the circular resolution. So it was done, it was done in a very graceful manner. That agenda point was removed from the, it was deferred and the working group was formed to see that particular transaction. And then ultimately the interested party also, you know, he came up and he said, okay, I'm a bit interested in this and whatever. So the basic thing is that the conflict of interest is not bad, but it, it is required to be disclosed. So that, this is a, the, 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 the skills, you know, uh, which the independent director needs to develop you know, uh, to safeguard the company, to safeguard the stakeholders. And then one of the common problem which is there in the board meeting is the agenda items, a lot of agenda items comes on the table at the last moment. They are not circulated to you. Now what is the reason behind is that is something God knows or sometimes happens also. It is called a green bananas, you know, we call a green banana strategies in the companies. So in that also, you, you have to always request to defer that agenda item to the subsequent meeting. If you feel that this is a very important agenda item and this, I, I, sorry, I have not got time to read this. It is a last moment agenda item. I cannot, I'm assenting from voting or something like that. So that in that thing, you have to be very conscious. Thirdly, when the board minute comes, you have to read the board minutes, each and every line, each and every page. Now, when I, I'm on the board of directors, if I, even I, so the, the company secretaries, I don't know, they harassed from me. I even see the grammatical mistakes. It makes a lot of difference. Ease or was ka bhi bahut difference padta hai. Jab fuzz ho ke tab pata chalta hai ki iska interpretations kya nikal rahe hai. You have to be very careful because why? As per section 149, if you have uh, gone through the board process, if, you, if the agenda item is in, under your knowledge, it is, uh, it is approved by the board processes and you have not dissented, then you are liable for that agenda. What are the consequences of that agenda decisions? So minutes are very important. It's a legal evidence. Never take easy. So that is why I'm telling if we are fond of reading, agar aap mein wo capability hai, read, 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 board, board uh, responsibility and career is must for you. You should go for it. Kyunki panna to padhe gai. So this is what is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's what my point. As per section 149, it is very clear that if suppose that decision is recorded in the minutes, it has passed to the board processes like from audit committee to any of the committee and gone to the board, you are aware of it. It is in your knowledge. But then also you are not taken any action, you are not spoken about it, you have not recorded your dissent in the minutes, you are held responsible. So onus is on you to prove that. So you have to be very careful. When you are on the board, board meeting, your eyes, ears, everything should be alert and open. So you have to do that. I'll share some examples, Sanjali Madam, on this. So uh, I, uh, I was on the uh, chairperson of audit committee of uh, one of the company. And uh, generally, uh, two, three days before the uh, audit committee is always scheduled before the board meeting, half an hour before the board meeting. And I generally visit at least a couple of days before the audit committee. And uh, this time, uh, every quarterly uh, meetings are there. And uh, this time, um, 
they said ki no uh, at least it, they are under preparation and uh, uh, we will see the financials you can see the financials just before the uh, you can come a little bit early prior before the audit committee meeting and you can review that and you need uh, because we are preparing it's getting ready and uh, so then you know if we are already done before two three days then we are satisfied ki everything is fine we run through entire agenda items all things are prepared and everything accordingly we prepare and uh, at that time uh, they did not allow and then when uh, uh, i visited just uh, an hour before the audit committee meeting uh, they were just uh, they were so confused and under pressure huge pressure uh, and then uh, they called me uh, you know um, at one corner of the room and said ki madam baki sab to ho gaya hai uh, but wo reconciliation mein some crores of rupees ka uh, reconciliation tally nahi ho raha hai so then uh, it's a huge thing because some crores of rupees and it was some 100 crores rupees ka reconciliation nahi match ho raha hai and wo hum teen din teen raat se hum dhoon rahe hai wo mili nahi raha hai and then what to do in such case so then again we conducted the audit committee and uh, because this audit committee are very important because the every quarter this uh, financials has to be approved and it has to be published and however uh, uh, we have actually adjourned or uh, said said ki uh, maybe once the item is because we cannot pass such unreconciled items and approve the financials in the audit committee and then in the board meeting and hence we said we uh, the audit committee decided that it let the again audit committee happens once the uh, accounts are proper the reconciliation is being done similarly uh, the sebi lodr is also very important and i had um, rmc that is risk management committee in one of the company and uh, where regularly some of the other updates and this company is highly SEBI regulated company. So a lot of regulations come. So during that time, I said whatever the SEBI regulation comes relating to industry, whether it is applicable to the company or not, so those should be brought to this RMC. Those should be discussed. Even if it is not applied, then it can be not applicable. But each and every circular notification of SEBI for this industry has to be has to be there in RMC from last RMC to current RMC and it has to be there and then now that is the practice of the company so everything is regulatory requirement relating to SEBI is run through another thing is um, about uh, it's always better to interact it is not only about the documents and we see the documents, lot of documents, 500,000 documents, uh, minutes, and uh, agent items, the attachments, the financials, and everything comes three, four days before. It is not only about, uh, uh, about looking at the documents and reading all the things. It's always better to have, before the board meeting, to have interaction with the CFO, interaction with the company secretary, interaction with the managing director, CEO of the company. It is always better to understand what it is happening, how the things are going, uh, if any uh, new things are coming in the agenda, what are their purpose, how it is and what for it is, to understand in much better way. Uh, again, each board has a different dynamics. Sometimes I have found ki board meetings are scheduled in such a tight manner all in one day all the committee meetings as well as board meetings are happening and uh, in that case it is always better to request to the management to have you know different dates for the committee meetings and the board meetings again uh, divya said about the family dynamics uh, one such example i can share with the uh, one of the board you know at that uh, the new generation has actually come in on the board and these are very aggressive and uh, they wanted to do a lot of things and uh, the that is of uh, one brother and another brother is like uh, typical and traditional thing 
and when so then both the th both thought process of both the brothers next generation were not matching and in that case lot of quarrels used to happen in the board meeting and at that time uh, uh, then we as independent directors decided to actually interact with the managing director and see that such the board meetings are not spoiled and discipline is maintained and whatever value add if we can give to the board because we know a lot of rules regulations uh, all the taxation the uh, if we can update like for example this brsr sustainability this is the item for every board every board every quarter discusses about the sustainability if we can bring some value add to the board is always valuable and accepted thank you uh, just a point to add always have a hands-on involvement in financials i think as a chartered accountant you have a great edge we company secretaries are on that way but if you understand the financials of the company and it is very it is a mandatory actually sabse badi requirement yahi hoti hai agenda mein ki sabse pehle aap financials dekho ki kya internal audit report hai kya financials hai kya growth hai that you know management reports that is very important to go through for any independent director and as ma'am has rightly said even in my companies or where i am i am an independent director i have made it a point ki pre board meeting briefing honi chahiye do din pehle either the cfo comes or a ceo ceo online hota hai but it is a pre board ke agendas mein kya discuss hone wala hai kyunki kai cheeze you just discuss informally and only to save the time of the board only the main uh, you know the critical matters comes on the board so i think that pre uh, uh, board meeting briefing is very important so i think uh, we as a professional as a is a, it's a great opportunity for uh, for us and we need to grab it by building our capabilities thank you thank you we are ending i would request ami to propose vote of thanks and uh, as we are moving to 10 billion dollars uh, you know economy uh, i have read something uh, somewhere that uh, the india will require at least 75000 independent directors by 2030 and right now i think the works around 20000 or something like that yeah 25000 so great gap we are great future madam is giving great opportunity yes definitely yes. Well, thanks to her <laughs> and we'll have one full day and we'll invite all the dignitaries again for that one day woman in the yes board room problems only yeah yeah chab good afternoon everyone on behalf of amdavad branch of icai i charmi doshi feeling deeply honored to give a formal vote of thanks to all the three powerful females uh, and on the leadership positions सी ए प्रीति सावला मैम सी सी एस डॉक्टर शिल्पी थापर मैम एंड सी एस दिव्या मोमया मैम आई एंड अप माई फॉर्मल वॉट ऑफ थैंक्स विथ अ वेरी गुड कोट जो तेज हवा का जोका है जो तेज हवा का जोका है उसको किसने रोका है उसको किसने रोका है सबके लिए जो मुश्किल है सबके लिए जो मुश्किल है उसके लिए वो मौका है राइट सो आई अपील ऑल द शीज ओवर हियर बी रेडी फॉर क्रिएटिंग सिग्नेचर सक्सेस स्टोरीज ऑल द वेरी बेस्ट टू ऑल ऑफ यू थैंक यू